Welcome back, everyone, to my lecture series on mathematical physics. Today's topic is going to be an introduction to functions of complex variables. There's some really fun and powerful stuff here, so get ready. Let's start with the really basic stuff. What do I mean by a function of a complex variable? Put simply, a function of a complex variable is a relation that maps a complex number z to another unique complex number w. Now, because the input z is composed of a real part and an imaginary part, like any complex number, the output w, which is also a complex number, is also composed of a real and imaginary part. Note that I've used i to denote the imaginary number here. Generally, the real and imaginary parts of w will themselves be functions of the real and imaginary parts of z. In other words, u and v will both be functions of x and y. Let's try to make sense of this with an example. Suppose that my complex function is just z squared. I can plug in my z, which is x plus yi, to rewrite this function as x plus yi whole squared, which is x plus yi times x plus yi. I can expand this out to get x squared plus 2xyi plus yi whole squared, and then use the fact that i squared equals negative 1 to write this expression as x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi. So now my complex function f of z has been broken up into a real part u and an imaginary part v, which is exactly what we said earlier, that you can break up a complex function into real and imaginary parts, which can then be written as functions of the real and imaginary parts of the input variable z. So just like how a complex number z is a pair of real numbers put together, a complex function f is a pair of real functions put together. Eventually, our goal with complex functions is to do calculus on them. So things like differentiation and integration, specifically contour integration. But in order to do all that, we need our complex functions to be differentiable, to have their derivatives defined and continuous. This leads us nicely to the concept of holomorphic functions. A function f of z is holomorphic in a region r of the complex plane if it has a unique derivative at every point in r. What do I mean by derivative? How is the derivative defined for complex functions? Well, it's defined the same way as it is for real functions. In other words, the derivative of f of z, which is f prime z or df dz if you prefer Leibniz notation, it's the limit of delta f, which is a change in f, over delta z, which is a change in z, as delta z approaches zero. Now, here's where the connection between real functions and complex functions starts coming up. For a complex function to be holomorphic or analytic or regular, whichever term you like to use, the conditions that need to be met are much more stringent than the conditions for real functions. Recall that if you had a real function f of x, for f of x to be differentiable at some point a, you needed the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero, you needed that limit to exist. Notice that I'm using h to denote a small change in x, and I've done the same for z as well, so hopefully that's not too confusing. For this limit to exist, we need the limit from the right and the limit from the left to exist. Additionally, we need those two limits to equal each other. In other words, the function has to have its right derivative and left derivative equal each other at that point. If they weren't equal, as is the case of a function that has a corner like this, then the function would not be differentiable at that point, because its left derivative and right derivative are both different. So that limit, as h approaches 0, doesn't exist, because it has two unique values depending on the direction in which uh, your h approaches 0. For a complex function, however, the criterion is much more stringent, purely because of the nature of complex numbers. For a real function, the real number x that serves as the input of the function, that real number can only approach a given value a from two directions, from the left and from the right, because x exists only on a number line. However, a complex number doesn't just exist on a number line, it exists on a whole plane, 
So it can approach a value A from above, below, left, right, from any diagonal direction. So a complex function has to be left differentiable, right differentiable, up differentiable, down differentiable, and diagonally differentiable, and it has to have its derivatives from all those directions equal each other for it to be considered differentiable at a given point A. So clearly this is a pretty strict requirement, but because this requirement is so strict, once we satisfy it, we'll have some really powerful results. But before we do that, let's look at some examples of a differentiable and a non-differentiable complex function. Our first example will be a simple cubic function. To check whether or not it's differentiable, let's just apply the definition of the derivative, which is df dz is the limit as delta z approaches zero of delta f over delta z, which is the same as the limit as h approaches zero of f of z plus h minus f of z over h. I'm going to omit writing the limits every time just to make things easy for myself. Anyway, f of z plus h is just z plus h whole cubed, and f of z is just z cubed, so we can plug that in, and then expand out the z plus h term. Now the z cubed terms in the numerator cancel out, and we end up with 3z squared h plus 3z h squared plus h cubed all over h. Now the h's in the numerator cancel out with the h's in the denominator, and we end up with a simpler expression that's 3z squared plus 3zh plus, plus h squared. We're not done yet because we still have to take the limit as h approaches 0. And if we do that, we'll just get 3z squared, since these other two terms are going to cancel out. Now in this particular example, the direction along which delta z or which h approach 0 is irrelevant. It could approach from any direction, and it wouldn't matter because it ends up canceling out in the end. So from this fact, we can conclude that z cubed is a holomorphic function. And in general, we can say that a complex function, z to the n, is holomorphic, and its derivative is just n times z to the n minus 1, where n is a positive integer. The other example we'll be doing is f of z, which is u plus vi is 2y plus xi. Again, let's use the definition of the derivative. The only difference is that now we have a function in terms of x and y instead of just z. So to make things easier, we'll use delta z instead of the h we used earlier. Because z itself is just x plus yi, it follows that delta z is just delta x plus delta y times i. So f of z plus delta z is 2 times y plus delta y plus x plus delta x times i. Subtracting f of z from this expression gives us 2 delta y plus delta x times i. And if we plug this into the definition of the derivative, we'll get the limit as delta z approaches 0 of 2 delta y plus delta x i over delta x plus delta y times i. Now here, the manner by which we make delta z approach 0 changes the value of the derivative we get. For instance, if we approach 0 along or parallel to the x-axis, so if we approach it from either the left or the right, that means delta y is always going to be 0, since only x is changing. So we're left with the limit as delta z approaches 0 of delta x times i over delta x, and that just equals i. However, if we approach 0 along or parallel to the y-axis, we approach it vertically, that means delta x is always going to be 0, and so we're left with the limit as delta z approaches 0 of 2 delta y over delta y times i, which is 2 over i, which is negative 2i. Now clearly, these two derivatives, one gives you i, the other gives you negative 2i, they're different. But for a function to be holomorphic, the derivatives along all directions have to exist and they have to equal each other. So we conclude that the function f of z, which is 2y plus xi, is not holomorphic. So even though f of z here is individually composed of two differentiable functions in real space, 2y and x, they're both differentiable in real space, the complex function f of z overall is not complex differentiable. It's not holomorphic. And that wraps it up for this video. In the next video, we're going to be going further with holomorphic functions, and we're going to start looking at the Cauchy-Ray modulations.